Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me for a cooling Hatha practice. I'm not sure where you're practicing right now, but where I am it's quite hot and I got inspired by the weather and thought it would be really nice to focus a little bit more on a gentle breath, on the yin energy, holding postures a little bit more stillness, trying to find that sweet contentment that comes with this cooling practice. Find yourself in a nice tall seat. You can sit in Virasana like I'm sitting or maybe onto a block. You can put a block underneath your hips. Maybe sitting onto your sitting bones with your knees out to the sides. And if you don't know me already, my name is Tamara Maxim and I record these classes live on Facebook, but you're welcome to check them out on YouTube right after the recording. I always upload them. All my classes are free and they're available for children and for adults. And there are lots of different styles of classes. And sometimes you'll see one of my crazy dogs like you have right here, honey. She always likes to roll around during the beginning of the class. So let her do that for a couple of minutes. So find yourself in your nice tall seat. Take a moment to center. Place your hands face up for this practice. And this will allow the energy to dissipate from your palms. It's a little bit more cooling in nature. Close your eyes down if you like, or, pass, or look past the tip of your nose with a softened gaze. Nasaka Drishti. Take a few moments to find your breath. Maybe at first the breath feels a little bit chalky or tight. And over the <laughs> first few moments of the class, you can get a little bit more connected to the breath and let it get deeper. Bring your awareness to your heart center and bring in this idea of contentment. Contentment is settling into the middle place between agony and bliss where you can pause like the turnaround breath between inhalation and exhalation, pleasantly allowing things to be as they are. And that will be the guiding for our practice tonight, this idea of santosha or contentment, allowing things to be as they are, allow everything to be easy and smooth, try not to make too much effort or push too much, just to find that center line, that beautiful center line. If you'd like to find a different intention or an additional intention, you can bring that in now, repeating it to yourself a few times. Maybe it's the word relax or love whatever it is that comes to you. If you like, dedicate your practice to someone, to a cause, to a place. Together we'll open this practice with one beautiful sound of Om. You can put your hands to your heart center, Anjali Mudra. Take a clearing breath in through your nose. We'll sigh out your mouth. Join me for OM if you like. Big breath in. Oh. And bow your mind into the beautiful light of your own heart. Blinking open your, blinking open your eyes if they're closed. And then slowly bring your gaze back up through center. And we'll start this practice lying down on our back. So make your way down onto your back. If you have blocks available, that's great, or a little cushion or a pillow, you might want to keep those handy. Make your way down onto the spine. And just take a moment here. Let your feet come down to the mat, kind of close to your, your buttocks. Arms are beside the body, palms facing down, and just feel whatever is touching the mat. And connect into it. So maybe draw the belly button a little bit more in toward the spine. Feel a little lift of the sit bones. Relax the shoulders back and down. Chin, chin is slightly in toward the chest. And we'll move through five rounds of floating bridge pose. So on your inhale breath, start to curl your tailbone toward the belly button. Lift your hips up. And as your hips lift up, start to lift the arms up and over the head and keep going until the back of the hands touch down. As you exhale, start to curl the tailbone down towards your heels. Palms come all the way down to the mat. Let's do it again. Inhale, breathe in through the nose. Let the hips lift up. Let the arms lift up and over the head. 
Feel the back of the hands press down. And then as you exhale, let the hips come slowly down, tailbone curling toward the heels, palms down. So there's a little lift of the lower back. Inhale, tailbone curls toward your tummy. Lift your hips up, arms and over, come up and over the head. Squeeze your inner knees toward each other. Back of the hands down. Exhale, lower all the way down. And do two more on your own. A nice long <laughs> inhalation as you lift the hips up, arms up, back of the hands down. And as you exhale, lower. Last one on your own. <clears throat> exhale, lower all the way back down moment here again feeling whatever is touching the mat a little bit more surrender feel whatever is not touching the mat with the soft air passing over top and hug your knees one at a time into your chest give yourself a nice squeeze rock a little bit side to side We'll start with a little sequence through Pavan and Muktasana wind removing so keep your right knee into your chest you can lower your left foot to the floor and keep your knee bent. Hug your right knee out and around the ribcage and toward your right shoulder. Squeeze the knee in. Give yourself a nice little hug here. And if you like, you can extend your left leg. As you take that knee out and around your ribcage, you can keep your right foot active, even your left foot as well. And then draw the knee back in toward the shoulder. Try to keep your shoulders relaxed down. A couple of more deep breaths here, simulating the ascending colon for our digestion. Try to find long, deep, equanimous breaths. In and out through your nose. And you can bend your left knee again. Place your left foot on the floor. Start to extend your right leg straight. And you can hold behind the hamstring. Make a little hammock with your hands just below your knee. So in bottom of the thigh and press your heel up toward the ceiling. If it feels good, you can extend your left leg back out. In the back of the leg, a nice stretch. Press your heel up, toes curl toward you. And as you're pressing the back of the thigh with your hands, press the thigh into your hands at the same time. Keep your shoulders relaxed down. Take a deep, full inhale here. Another full exhale. You can soften that knee, bend your left knee, place your foot back on the mat, and now cross your flexed right ankle over your thigh. Supine Pigeon, Supta Kaputasana, and you're welcome to stay here. The shape might be a lot, opening the hip, or start to draw your left knee in toward your chest and a little bit out toward the left shoulder. And as you hug either behind the thigh or in front of the shin bone, press your right knee away at the same time. Giving your right hip a nice opening. You can draw your left knee a little bit more to the left. Two more deep breaths. Breathing in and out through your nose. Try to find that pause at the top of the inhale and that space at the end of the exhale. Then release your left foot to the floor. Press your right foot up toward the ceiling. From the inside of your right knee, wrap your right hand around the outer edge of your right foot and pull your right knee down to the outer edge of your mat. Have happy baby. And a few things can happen with your left foot. You can keep it planted on the mat. You can roll to the outer edge of your left foot and the knee will drop out. You're welcome to extend the leg to any degree. And maybe even lift it up toward the sky whatever feels good for you. Might even like a couple extensions and bending of that right leg. Pump your foot up and down a couple of times. Or just hold still, breathing through the nose. Anytime you feel like you need to release any heat or extra tension, you can sigh out your mouth. Bend your left knee if it's not 
Guide both knees into the center of your chest. Give yourself a nice squeeze, Apanasana. And then keep your left knee in toward your chest. Plant your right foot on the floor. Papanumutasana on the left side. And you'll notice that these poses are being done quite slowly, bringing in that yin energy, that feminine, more relaxed moon energy, cooling in nature. Stay here, you can extend your right leg straight. Draw your left knee out and around the rib cage and then back in toward your shoulder, simulating the descending colon. Really helpful for eliminating waste and toxins from the body, which includes heat. Use your intention and your breath to keep you anchored into this moment. Coming back to it. And bend your right knee again, place your foot on the mat, and then extend your left leg to straight. Make a little stir up with your hands. Hold behind the thigh, so not behind the calf so much, but the thigh. Press the sitting bones down and then press your right left heel up toward the ceiling. Toes curl toward you, and as much as you're pulling the leg toward you, push as well. And then maybe you extend your right leg straight, keep your feet active. This is a good release for the lower back and also a nice stretch for the back of the thigh. Lengthening up through the whole back line of the leg, toes curling toward you. Couple deep breaths. Let's be kind, L shaped pose. And you can bend your right knee, place your right foot on the mat, flex your left ankle, place it over top of your right thigh. Almost, if you can stay here if you like and let the left knee press away or start to bring the right knee in toward the right shoulder. Maybe a little bit more out to the right, keeping both feet active. Supta Kapotasana, supine, pigeon pose. Taking your few breaths here, keep guiding the right knee more out to the right, pressing that left knee away. Feel that stretch into your left hip, releasing any heat that's building up there. Quite a storehouse of emotion. Few. Slowly bring your right foot back down onto the mat. Extend your left foot up into the air, keeping your knee bent, keeping your left elbow on the inside of your leg, wrap your left hand around the outer edge of your left foot. Arda Ananda Balasana, half happy baby. Find that same variation with your right leg, maybe keep the foot flat or let it fall up to the side, maybe extend your right leg straight or up to the ceiling. Really listening to your body and finding that place of contentment where it feels good for you. Taking a few deep breaths. Might even feel good to pump that leg out a few times. A couple more breaths here. And slowly walk your right foot in if it's not. Bring both knees into your chest again and they squeeze if you like. Wrap your hands around your outer feet, pull yourself in, or forearms across the shins, rock side to side. Slowly make your way back onto your spine again, back of the head down, feet are down. We'll take another set of, of little bridge posts, Sakribandha Sarvangasana, this time with the option to bind the hands. So walk your feet in close enough that your palms, which are flat beside your hips, are wider than your feet, so your feet are just in line with your hip point. On your inhale breath, start to curl your tailbone towards your belly, draw the belly in, start to lift the hips up. And from here, walk the shoulder blades a little closer to each other, maybe interlace your hands under your lower back, squeeze your knuckles towards your heels, keep lifting the hips, inner thighs and knees magnetizing toward one another. Take a few more deep breaths here. Maybe squeeze the shoulder blades a little bit more, keeping the chin in the center, looking up toward the ceiling. Two more deep breaths. And 
last deep inhale. Full exhale. And if your hands are bound, release them back to the mat. Take an inhale breath. Lift your hips just a little higher. And then as you exhale, lower all the way down onto your back. Kick your feet wide. Let your knees touch. Bring one hand onto your heart, one hand onto your belly. Breathe in deep. Sigh out your mouth. Release any heat. Again, breathe in deep. Sigh to release heat or tension. Then let your feet come back together. Hug your knees into your chest and this time grab behind the thighs or you can roll to your side and we'll make our way into a tabletop position. So roll a few times if it feels good or over to one side and push yourself up. Cross over your ankles, let your knees come back behind you. Bringing yourself into a nice tabletop shape, palms under shoulders, knees under hips, your toes are tucked. And we'll move through Chakra Vakasana, an opening up of the seven energy centers of the spine, also called Cat and Cow. Spreading your fingertips wide, toes are tucked. On your inhale breath, with a full inhale, tailbone up, tummy down, chest up, maybe look up. As you exhale, round the spine, chin to chest, look to your belly. Two more breaths like that. Inhale, tailbone up, tummy down, chest up, look up. Exhale, round the spine, chin to chest. Last time here, inhale, tailbone up, tummy down, chest up. Exhale, round the spine. And this time if you like, pull back a little bit, tend your fingers, hips, not touching the heels, but moving that way, arm bones straight. And then come back to neutral. Untuck your toes, knees can be wider together. Sink your hips to your heels, forehead down. Arms extended, Balasana, child pose. Take a deep breath in here. Let the arms maybe extend even more. You can even tend your fingertips. Exhale, sink the hips down. One more like that. Inhale, fill up the back body. Exhale, hips to heels. On your next inhale breath, walk your hands over to the right side, maybe even all the way off your mat. You can soften your right arm if you need, but let that left arm extend, maybe even placing the left palm on top of the right. Both arms can be straight as well. Let your forehead relax down, ears between your arms. Feel an opening in the left side of the body. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. A few more breaths here. Two more full rounds. And on your inhale breath, start to walk your hands back through center. Keep reaching all the way over to the other side. Keep going all the way to the left. You can soften your left arm if you need, but let that right arm stretch. Maybe place your right hand on top of your left. Hips pull back and down toward the right. Let your ears come between your arms, forehead down. We'll take five deep breaths. Last two breaths here. Deep inhale, full exhale, walking your hands all the way back through center. If you like, tend your fingertips, let the arm bones pull up, forehead down. Big breath in and a big breath out. And then flatten your palms, press into your hands, pull yourself to a tabletop position. Walk your hands a little bit more forward than where they are now. Spread your hands wide, tuck your toes. On your inhale breath, shift the hips back toward the heels, pop the knees up and start to shift back and up Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Dog. Pedaling out your heels a couple of times, right and left, right and left. Okay, 
Try to draw the eye of the elbows more toward each other. Create space in the shoulders. Let your head lengthen, looking between your thighs. And when you can, start to straighten the legs and press the heels down. Taking a full deep belly breath here. And a full exhale. And if you need, you can always lower to tabletop or child pose. One more full round of breath if you like. Bend your knees a lot. Pull your hips back and up as you breathe in. And as you exhale, press the heel, the legs straight. Press the heels down. Look forward to your hands. Take as many steps as you like to get to the top of your mat. Might be a little hop if you like to do that. When you get there, Ardha Uttanasana, palms to shins. Lengthen your chest forward. Exhale, fold. Let's do that again two more times. Inhale, lengthen, Ardha Uttanasana. Flat back, shoulders, drawing back. Exhale, fold. Last time, Ardha Uttanasana, lengthen halfway up. As you exhale, Uttanasana, fold. Feet are hip distance apart. Soften your knees as you inhale. Take a slow roll or a rise up to standing. And when you get all the way up, let your arms come all the way up to the sky. Big breath in, arch back, hands to heart center. And we'll take Ardha Surya Namaskar three times. So we'll be folding forward three times. Inhale. Urdhva Hastasana, tailbone toward your heels, get a little arch back, back bend, soften the knees, slow descent down, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, flat back, palms to shins or fingers to the toes. Exhale, soften your knees, fold, press into the feet, rise up, you can spread your arms wide, gather up some energy, hands to heart center, back to the heart. One more time, inhale, arch back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, release. Inhale to rise all the way up, all the way to the sky. Reach up to the sky. Stay standing for a moment, hands to heart center. Release hands by your side, find Tadasana. Take a moment here if you're connected through your feet, feel rooting down through the soles of your feet into the mat, and then feel the lift up to the sky. Beautiful moment to be here, feel the spaciousness, the openness, feel present here in this moment. And then float your hands back to your heart center as you blink open your eyes. Take very slow movements through Surya Namaskar C, it's a more cooling sun salutation. In your inhale breath, reach up to the sky, arch back. As you exhale, fold forward. Halfway lift as you inhale, lengthen the spine. As you exhale, plant your palms and step your right foot back, lower your right knee down, slide it back. As you're ready, Anjaneyasana, low crescent lunge. Pull your left hip back, right thigh forward. Feel free to untuck your toes if you like. Let your arms reach up to the sky, but create space around the shoulders and neck. Take another big breath in here. Reach up a little higher. Let the hips descend down on your exhale. One more breath, maybe look up. As you exhale, plant your palms down, tuck your back toes, lift your knee up, and step back, downward dog. Ripple forward, high plank, lower your knees if you need all the way down to the belly. Bhujangasana, cobra, palms beside your shoulders, elbows back. Inhale, lift your heart. Tops of the feet down. Exhale to lower. Tuck your toes, press into your hands, shift back to an extended child pose. Forehead down. Inhale, come back up. And as you exhale, downward dog. Deep breath in. And deep breath out. In your inhale breath, step your right foot forward, in between, inside of your right thumb, lower your back knee down, untuck your toes, inhale, Anjaneyasana, reach up, maybe look up, stay here for a couple of breaths, pull your right hip back, left thigh forward, 
reach up to the sky, but create space between your neck and shoulders. Stay present with your breath. Another deep breath in and a long breath out. One more inhale, reach up. This time as you exhale, bring your fingertips to the mat, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, step forward to the top of your mat, keep the distance, lengthen as you inhale, release and fold as you exhale, Uttanasana, press down to the feet, knees can be bent, reach all the way up, Urdhva Hastasana, hands to heart center, Samastiti. We'll do the other side, Surya Namaskar C, inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen, flat back. As you exhale, plant your palms. This time, step your left foot back, lower your left knee down. As you're ready, rise up, Anjaneyasana. I'm staying here for a few breaths. And then tuck your back toes if you like. Pulling your right hip back, left leg forward. Arms are straight up as shoulders relax. Feel free to gaze up if you like. Another deep breath in here, nice breath out. One more, inhale, stay for your exhale. Inhale, reach up, maybe look up. As you exhale, plant your palms, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, step back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Inhale, ripple forward, high plank, lower your knees, lower all the way down to the mat. And this time we'll take Exalted Cobra, Viparita Bhujangasana. Take your fingertips wide off of the mat. In line with your chest, tip your elbows up to the ceiling. Root the feet down. And if for some reason this isn't okay for you, you can take Cobra Pose. Inhale, lift your heart, lift your chest, look up. Exhale, lower, look over your left shoulder, right shoulder down. Inhale, come up through center. Really nice variation of Cobra. Left shoulder down, look over your right. It's one of my favorites to open the shoulders. Inhale, lift your heart. Stay for an extra breath. One more inhale, release any tension from the heart center. Exhale, fold forward. Palms underneath your shoulders, tuck your toes. Shift your hips back, extended child pose. And then make your way back and up, downward dog. The full breath in and a full breath out. Step your left foot forward inside of your left thumb, back knee lowers down. Untuck your toes if you like and reach your arms up to the sky. A few breaths here, pull your outer left hip back, right thigh forward. Feel free to look up if it feels good. Most important to create space between the shoulders and the neck. Right thigh descending down, left hip back. Another deep breath in, breathe out. One more inhale, maybe look up this time. As you exhale, come onto your fingertips. Tuck your back toes, look forward, step forward. Keep the distance. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, full. Inhale to rise all the way up, Urdhva Hastasana. Stay standing again, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Take a deep, full breath in. And a deep, full breath out. your eyes if they're closed, standing at the top of your mat. Full rikshasana to start with and find a focal point for your pose, something to look at for your drishti, your gaze. Pour the weight down into your left foot. Spread your toes wide and feel the foot gripping the mat. Kata bandha, this foot lock, and then draw the energy up through your thigh. Lift your right knee up to the sky. Toe your thighs parallel. Open your right leg to the right and you're welcome to tap the toes to the mat if that's better for you or start to slide the foot somewhere up the inside of your left leg maybe avoiding pressing right against the knee just below or above the knee hands to heart center beautiful way to find your balance you can always use a wall if you need see if you can find that little bit of cobra in the heart and at the same time curl your tailbone down towards your heel to get a lengthening of the spine, a drawing in of the belly. Stay here or open your branches. Feel free to take any variations that you like. To find this contentment here in this moment. Beautiful stillness, acceptance of what is. So we'll take a few more deep breaths. You can play with closing your eyes or looking up or maybe back bending.
exhale, we float your hands to your heart center. And then lean back to center, lift it up, and step all the way back to the back of your mat. And then turn yourself open to the side, create a big star shape. Outer edges of your feet are parallel or slightly pigeon-toed, especially if you have issues with sciatica down the sides of your, uh, of your thighs and getting into that nervy pain that comes down the back of the leg at times. Bring your hands to your hips, lift your chest, shoulders back, elbows back. Exhale, lift your hips and fold. Bring your palms underneath your shoulders, press into your Padottanasana. Halfway lift as you lengthen. As you exhale, bring the crown down toward the mat. And if you need to, soften your knees or maybe even bring a block to rest your head on. If you can get quite deep into this pose, maybe you walk your hands closer to your to the same line as your feet, and as you press into your hands, the crown comes down. Wherever you decide to be, find stillness, find breath. You can feel this in the back of the thighs. Feel this along the sides of the spine. If you've decided to go into Shirshasana B, if you're deep into the posture, no problem. Take a few breaths. Try to do what's cooling in nature for you. So this is a pretty mild inversion, letting the head come down below the heart. If it's too much, you can always stay halfway or even come to standing. Two more deep breaths wherever you are. Okay, everybody, bring your palms underneath your shoulders, soften your knees if you like, hands to hips, and press all the way up. Turn your toes toward the front of the mat, soften your front knee, take a big step forward to the front of your mat. Again, find Tadasana, feet can be together touching or hip distance. I always find this posture to be so powerful because it's as if you've stepped into this moment and here you are at this very moment. There's everything in your whole life behind you. There's nothing yet in front of you. So you have it all right here. And that's the most perfect place to find this place of contentment, Santosha. This is where it is, all of it. If your eyes are closed, blink open your eyes and just bring that feeling with you. This time we'll press down into the right foot, pull all of the weight down into your right foot, spread your toes wide. Start to bring your left knee up you can find your drishti, your focal point, tilt your thighs parallel and then open up the leg, keep your foot flexed. Then place your left foot inside of your right thigh. You, you, the toes can be lower if you need, of course, or slide the foot somewhere along the inside of the leg without touching down on the knee. Hands to your heart center. You can stand up nice and tall. Finding brikshas in a tree pose. Okay, open your branches. Keep focusing on your one single point. Come back to your intention, your dedication, your breath. It's all here for you in this moment. Even if you find yourself wobbling around or hopping around even sometimes in tree pose, can you come back to a, a sense of contentment? It's okay to be as you are and who you are right here, right now. And it's that way in every moment, accepting yourself as you are. With gratitude for that. Bring your hands back to your heart. Bring your knee back up. Take a big step back with your left leg and we're going to turn to the side of the mat again. Prasavita Padottanasana. Just turn to the front of the mat. Hands on your hips again. Make the outer edges of your feet parallel. Draw the shoulders and elbows back. Big breath in. As you exhale, hinge at the hips, lift the hips and fold. And this time, come to a halfway lift. You can use a block if you like. Bring your right hand underneath your face. Bring your left hand to your left hip. Maybe hand to the sacrum and try to level out the hips. Start to turn and look over your left shoulder. That feels good. You can look up. You can always keep your gaze down as well. And maybe reach your left arm up to the sky, palm facing away from you. 
Bring your hand around to your lower back and maybe you can hook the fingers around the top of your right thigh. Keep twisting, looking to the left. Maybe you can walk your right hand to the outer left ankle. This twists are a wonderful way to release tension and tightness. Beautiful way to cool the body and bringing out anything that's creating heat or tension. Try to keep puppy if you have one nearby. It always feels good. <laughs> Release that. Come back to your center. Halfway lift. And this time, left hand comes under the face. Right hand to your right hip. Start to turn and twist. Maybe you look up to the right if that feels okay for your neck. If not, you can stay down. Bring your hand onto your sacrum. Make sure that's level before you twist too deep. Maybe you reach your right arm up. Maybe you can spin your hand around behind you for a little bind to the top of the left thigh. And maybe get a little deeper, bringing your left hand to the outer right ankle. Pull yourself in if you like. Take a few deep breaths here. Variation of Prasavita Padottanasana, getting that nice twist ringing out of the spine. And slowly unwind yourself. Come back to center. Take a big breath in and a big breath out. And again, bring your hands to your hips. Dropping your knees if you need as you come up. And from here, we'll heel toe our feet in. So you're still facing the side of your mat. I'm just going to face this side so you can see. So heel toe your feet in. Preparing for Malasana, a little squat, a yogi squat. Bring, reach your arms up to the sky. And if squatting down is difficult for you, make your way down onto your seat into a seated butterfly. Otherwise, let the knees bend out in line with your toes. And if you like, you can always sit onto a block. Elbows to the inner knees, palms coming toward each other. Heel of the hands down as your chest lifts. And find your center place here. If you don't need the block, you decided to use it, uh, go without it, then just release and come a little deeper. You're welcome to stay here for a few breaths. If you want to take another additional twist, take your right fingertips out to the right. You can use your left elbow in your inner knee and turn and look to the left, or maybe reach your left arm up just for a few breaths. And come back to your center. You take the other side, left fingertips out to the left. Use your right elbow inside of your right knee, or maybe reach up. Coming back to your center, one more breath here. Malasana, lift the heart, find that cobra. And slowly we'll release down. So you can bring one hand behind or both hands behind, come onto your seat. Slowly bring your knees together to touch and extend them out so you're still facing the edge of your mat or the long side of your mat. Give your legs a little wiggle. And then start to open up your legs wide for Upavishta Konasana, wide-legged forward fold. And you might want to keep a block handy to put your head on or rest your arms on as we start to lean forward, or even both of your blocks if you have two. From here, press your fingertips back behind you, maybe one in front, one behind, and see if you can open up your legs a little wider. See if you can bring your toes, your heels toward the corners of your mat. And then from here, fingertips back behind you, lengthen the chest and start to hinge forward, pushing the hips back behind you as you guide the chest ahead. And this is where you might want to bring in those blocks. You might want to lay your forearms there. You might even be higher up, no problem. Might even be better for you to stay here. If you can go deeper. For myself, I like to walk my hands on the inside of my feet and Chest descends down, forehead down. Maybe you're the person who can get belly and chest down. And if that's the case, focus on the heart reaching forward. Let your head relax. Maybe turn your gaze to one side. A few more deep breaths here. So if the gaze is to the side, just switch it up after a breath or two.
wherever you are, take three more deep breaths. Slowly walk your hands closer to your legs, closer to your chest to rise up. Bring your right forearm onto your right thigh, left hand onto your hip, and we'll get another nice twist here. You're welcome to stay or maybe you take your right forearm inside of the leg. Reach your left arm up to the sky, big breath in, up and over the head, reaching toward the same direction as your right toes. And if you can go deeper, that's fine. Maybe take a bind of the right foot. Maybe your left hand comes to meet it, looking underneath your left arm. This is a lot for your neck. You can always let the head relax down. Parsva, Upadishta Konasana, side, wide-legged forward fold. Slowly rise back up. Just stay in the, in the center here. Notice the difference. And then take your left hand onto your left thigh, maybe inside your left arm, left forearm. Right hand to your right hip, turn and twist open, maybe look up. This might be good, or maybe you reach your right arm up and over your ear. Maybe you can find that bind. And try not to squish yourself with your arm. Create some space between your arms, your shoulders, and your neck. Take a full deep breath in. Full deep breath out. Two more here. And a nice release of the side body. Creating space between the ribs. And slowly rise back up. Just notice the difference. Having both sides stretch together. Lean back into your hands. Slide your heels in. Keep your knees wide, feet wide. And the windshield wiper the knees side to side. Oh, this feels so good. The knee that's moving in to the center, press it down. And then all the way back, gather your knees in. Give yourself a nice hug, forehead toward your knee. Then you can turn yourself back toward the front of your mat and extend your legs straight. Move the flesh around your seat from side to side. Sit up nice and tall, flex your feet if you can. Toes curl towards you. You can always put something under your knees or sit onto a block, get a little taller. <laughs> Pet a cute puppy if you have one. <laughs> puppy pet break. On your inhale breath, reach your arms to the sky, full stretch. As you exhale, fold to any degree. Wherever you are, hang on to something. Maybe your mat, maybe your legs, lengthen halfway. And then from here, fold in for five breaths, Paschimottanasana. If you can go quite deep, feel free to take a bind of your feet or wrap maybe your fingers of one hand around your opposite wrist or let the hands surrender and relax. Wherever your head lands, just let it relax. Let your chin come toward the chest. Slowly take a roll all the way back up. Bend your knees, bring your feet to the mat, fingertips pointing towards your hips in reverse tabletop. Lift your hips up, maybe drop the head all the way back, squeezing the hips, lift up a little higher. And then slowly lower down. And bring your feet toward the top of your mat. Feel free to bring a block with you. You might want to use it in this posture. Hips a little closer to your heels. On your inhale breath, reach your arms forward and up. And as you exhale, slowly, slowly lower all the way down onto your back. Walk your feet in close to your 
hips. Another round of Satyabandha Sarvangasana. And then we'll have a second back bend. You're welcome to take Vrdhva Dhanurasana if you like, upward facing bow. So from here, arms beside your body, pressing down into your feet on your inhale, start to lift your hips up. And if you like, take a bind of the hands again, maybe the opposite bind. Knuckles moving towards your heels, lift your heart toward your chin. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, inner knees and inner thighs, squeezing. If you'd like, you can take supported bridge instead. Could have said that first, but you probably did it if you wanted to. So block underneath your hips on either of the first two settings. The third setting is quite intense. You're welcome to try that if you like. Take a couple more deep breaths in whichever back bend you've tried here. And release your arms, come all the way down. Let your feet come out wide again, inner knees touch. Place one hand on your heart, one hand on your abdomen, breathe into your hands. Feel this awesome sense of surrender into the mat below you and at the same time the soft air passing over you. Bring your hands back to the side, walk your hand, uh, feet back under your knees, hip distance. You're welcome to make another set of supported bridge if you've come out of it, a little bridge pose which we've done a few times already, or a um, more full back bend, Urdhva Dhanurasana. And if you like that one, press your hands up toward the ceiling, bring your hands beside your ears. If you're going into little bridge pose, you'll press your hands down beside your feet, lift your hips up, and everybody lift their hips up. You can slide the block under your sacrum for supported bridge if you're going there. If you're going for Urdhva Dhanurasana, press into your hands enough to pop up onto the crown of your head, and maybe stay here for a few breaths, that might be enough or press into your hands and feet and start to lengthen. Lengthen your arms, lengthen your legs, drop the head back. Try to take three to four more deep breaths in whichever variation you're in. ready to come down from Urdhva Dhanurasana, come on to the crown of your head lightly, chin in toward the chest, and all of us will come out through a little bridge pose, letting the hips come down, release that block if you have it underneath you. And then from here, let your feet come together, knees out wide. Take your Baddha Konasana, one hand into the heart, one hand to the belly. Breathe in. Breathe out. Sigh out your mouth again. Inhale. Very cooling. Last one. And gather your knees together. Bring your arms out either in a T shape or a cactus shape. Jog your hips a little bit to the left side and bring both knees together over to the right. You can look over your left shoulder if that feels good for you. You can bring the knees up higher or take a different twist if you have one that you like. Breathe the whole length of the spine. Breathe down the sides of your legs. Breathe across your torso, your belly, your chest, your shoulders. Use this pose to release any last bit of heat that is built up in your body. Let yourself be cooled by the breath.
last deep inhale and a full exhale. And slowly bring your knees back to center. Give yourself a nice squeeze. Let your feet come back down to the mat. Practice your arms, your T-shape again. Hips a little bit to the right side. Bring your knees to the left. Going deeper if you like by bringing the knees higher or maybe a different supine twist. Possibly turning your gaze to the right. About 12 deep breaths here. Feel the spaciousness and expansiveness of the breath across the body. Feel the release of any heat that's built up. with your intention, your dedication, your focus in this moment. Feeling a beautiful sense of contentment for all that you are. Last deep breath. Full deep breath in. Sigh out your mouth if you like. Bring your gaze back to center. Bring your knees back up into your chest. Bending your legs up toward the sky, arms up toward the sky, Viparita Karani, roll out your ankles and wrists. If you have the opportunity to move to a wall and take your legs up the wall, that's a really beautiful, cooling way to end the yoga practice. Really nice release for the back as well. Feel free to stay here. If you want to take a full happy baby, let the knees come out wide, reach through from the inside of your knees with your arms and then the outer edges of your feet with your hands, curling your tailbone down toward the mat. As you press your feet up toward the ceiling, press down with your hands into your feet. Roll the sacrum toward the mat. And if you'd like to take any other kind of inversion, such as plow pose or shoulder stand, or even sheer shasana A can be considered a cooling way to end your practice. Just take these next few moments to bring yourself into a posture that feels soothing and easeful and cooling. Whatever variation you're in, especially if your feet are up high, enjoy the sensation of all of the blood flow of your body coming back in towards your center. If you're in Viparita Karani, let your limbs and your joints soften. If you're in plow pose or shoulder stand, keep the chin in the center as the feet go behind the head for plow or up toward the ceiling for shoulder stand. If you're in Shirshasana A, you can take about 10 more deep breaths.
you're ready to release, you can keep your legs up the wall if you like to lead, uh, go through to the end of the class. If you're into your shasana, maybe take a little rest, either on a seat or in child pose, coming down onto your back from plow pose or shoulder stand, maybe even taking fish pose. And then when you're ready, any last shape that you need that feels comforting and relaxing, and then allow yourself to move into Shavasana unless you've chosen to keep your legs up the wall. Allow your arms and legs to, to completely relax in Shavasana. Feel the sensation of all the parts of your body that are touching the mat and let yourself surrender. Feel the soft air flowing over the top of your body or whatever parts are not touching the mat. Feel gratitude and contentment in this moment. It's such a beautiful place to be. Close the practice with a chant of Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, a chant for peace, peace for yourself, peace for each other, and peace for the whole world. Welcome to join me if you like, and then stay resting for as long as you can. Take a deep clearing breath in, full breath out. Inhale to begin. Oh Shanti 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 Thank you so much for sharing in this beautiful practice. I hope you feel cool and relaxed. Feel free to look on YouTube for any of my free yoga videos. There are, I think there are around 65 now for adults and kids. I hope you enjoy them. Share them around. Until we can see each other again in person, I'll keep sharing these practices and keep the yoga community connected virtually. Namaste.